Hard mode has the potential to change the face of Clash of Clans esports, but not just at Town Hall 16, where the biggest esports circuits are played, but across all of Clash of Clans, all the way down to Town Hall 9 even. You think it could change it there? I guess we're going to find out today because we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of hard mode and normal mode attacks at every Town Hall level. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's dive into it. We're going to start with Town Hall 9. And as we see, this attack has the hard mode on the right side and normal mode on the left. Both of them started off with a king throwing a spiky ball to snipe off an air defense. And the queen shooting a giant arrow to snipe off a sweeper and an air defense of her own. And then a little bit of lightning to snipe off the third air defense. And now we can just put a lava hound and the dragons to rush the final air defense of the base and go in behind the sweepers. Very, very simple. Just generic dragon setup here. This will clear out almost any Town Hall 9 base. I've really found almost nothing we can stand up to it. And I think that with the way that hard mode is being implemented, I think that it's going to have a bigger impact on the higher Town Hall levels. And I'll explain why in just a moment. But we can see that in these two attacks here, the dragons were moving across the base. They're almost identical. The only difference, I think, the only major difference between the two attacks that I did was I pulled the Lava Hound on accident out of the defensive CC on the normal mode attack. So it actually ended up taking a little bit longer. So don't let that fool you. If I was able to keep the heroes away, then we wouldn't have had that little bit of a slowdown. And they probably would have been able to finish off at roughly the same time. But we can see the dragons, how they just kind of moved their way through the base there. And remember, the dragons are going to be affected by the extra 5% damage. So a little bit of extra damage on them, but not enough to actually overwhelm them. In the Town Hall 10 comparison, we can see that with and without hard mode, we were able to triple the base there in almost an identical time. Now, the attacks weren't done exactly the same, but they had the basic same idea. We just started in with a line of golems after we used eight lightning, two quakes to zap out both of the multi infernos and then he ground them. And then I had a frozen arrow and a giant arrow on the queen. And so I was able to pop off the giant arrow immediately, making sure that I pop it earlier in the attack there so it takes out as much of the base as possible and just softens things up before I go in. And then I could just kind of hang on to the freeze, the poison, and the king ability, and then they can go off later on. But I have noticed that because the hard mode is only affecting the base damage output of the heroes, that makes so that if you have equipment that is doing projectile damage, like for these levels, for Town Hall 9 and 10, would be the giant arrow and the spiky ball on the king and the queen. And if I am able to do projectile damage, then that damage is not actually affected by hard mode being activated. So I can get maximum potential out of those specific pieces of equipment and things like the spiky ball will still one shot everything that it hits just like it would in normal mode. And so I'm able to take advantage of that. And I think that is going to have a big impact on lower level esports if we end up seeing some tournaments going on later on. So we can see that at Town Hall 11, the normal mode ended up taking longer than the hard mode. And obviously that can be affected just by a slight variation in pathing. They're all spam attacks though. So we don't know exactly how things are gonna move. We're not sure exactly what the giant arrow on the queen is gonna hit there. We can see that the equipment was varied up a little bit for this one. We ran the giant arrow with the, with the frozen arrow for the queen once again, but we did switch up the king and Swap them out to the Rage Vial instead of the Spiky Ball. Taking away a little bit of the projectiles, but getting some extra value out of him. And then we went with the Warden running the Rage Vial and the Eternal Tome. Very, very standard equipment here for most Witch attacks there. That's what you should mainly be aiming for. And then those attacks, those, all those pieces of equipment are also very good for later Town Hall levels as well. But I do want to point out that it attacks like Witches or smash attacks where we have healers keeping a big pack of troops alive, then being able to avoid taking the extra 5% damage from all the defenses is going to work to our advantage here because you have to think about it that the skeletons are the ones actually taking the majority of the hits there. The golems are taking some hits there, but the skeletons are taking a lot of the heat off of everybody else there. And so attacks with healing and with spawning can be able to tank for you since skeletons are going to die in one hit pretty much regardless of the level of the defenses, then it doesn't matter if they're dealing 5% more damage. And so I feel like we're going to step away from the skeletons and the witches, and we're going to switch over to something with a little bit more fixed HP that doesn't spawn extra protection for itself. And I think at Tunnel 12, we can start to see a separation of hard mode and regular mode, but that isn't quite happening yet. We see the regular mode just finishing up now, and we can see the hard mode is able to overtake it. So you'll probably notice that the attack times once again are almost identical. 
We decided to run five golems on this one here with 13 super wizards. A very, very simple spam attack here. A classic, one of my favorites. And actually, we were able to actually put in some new things in it that haven't been seen in previous videos. And that is with the log launcher, we filled it with a, with a root rider and also with a druid. And so we can actually get the extra benefit out of that. But I mean, everything else is the same outside of it being a hard mode. The execution, I think I was able to execute these both pretty much the same. But we just walked through the top quarter of the base there after zapping out the infernos. Charge the Eagle Artillery and the last Inferno as early into the attack as possible after your initial lightning. And then we can use the overgrowth on the Town Hall area. So you can see that the attacks are moving through the base here at almost an identical rate. Like, obviously, the Golems would eventually get overwhelmed there if the damage of the defenses was dealing enough. And then the, with the defenses would then be able to turn onto the Super Wizards. Unlike the Witch attacks there, where the Witches would be constantly spawning to protect what is behind and then make sure that they can continue, continuously apply the damage output. When you're dealing with just the golems, then if the damage on the base there is high enough, then the golems would be overwhelmed. But as long as that balance is in the, in the, in the direction of the offense, then it becomes almost impossible to stop an attack like this. And even with hard mode, we can see that the attack went through just as easily as it did on normal mode. For Town Hall 13, I decided we wanted to do a Queen Charge into Hogminer Hybrid. Now, I have a theory, and this is going to put it to the test, that a Queen Charge in general is going to be disproportionately affected by Hard Mode because of the way the Hard Mode is implemented. It is going to make so that heroes in general are going to get less value. Now, the extra damage on the base there, obviously, is going to make so that all attacks are slightly affected. But the reduction of damage output and the HP of specifically the queen is it makes so that she has to burn rages earlier and put in protection spells like freezes more often to be able to keep keep herself protected and that could make so that with an attack that is so heavily reliant on the on the queen and really any attack that is extremely reliant on the heroes in general like a hero dive it is going to make so that these attacks are going to potentially be hurt by hard mode and that's kind of unfortunate i don't know if that's the intent of the hard mode is to make so that the spam attacks are less affected and then the higher skilled attacks are more affected and so maybe there's still some tweaks that supercell needs to make with that to maybe find a different way to do it but i think they're just kind of brainstorming different ways to try to make so the town hall 16 heroes aren't quite as strong because often those town hall 16 heroes like wipe out the whole base on their own and then the army is just kind of an afterthought right and so it's going to, as a result, cascade down to the Town Hall 13 levels and make so the Queen Charge down here is going to be a little less weak. And we could absolutely just throw down, like, dragons or something like that. And I'll demonstrate that for Town Hall 14, I think. And we'll see exactly what we could do with that. But in this attack here, we did have a little bit of variation with some spell placement. It's kind of hard to match a Queen Charge blow for blow and get all the exact timing as we do the side-by-side -side here. But we did end up having the King getting targeted by the Seagull Inferno as he went through the Town Hall on the hard mode. But outside of that, they performed relatively close. Both of them obviously still viable, and they were able to succeed and, and get the triple. However, just a little bit extra resources being needed to be used on the Queen a little bit earlier for hard mode than our regular mode. So that's the big difference there, and I think it's a big takeaway. Taking a look at Town Hall 14, we put the Queen Charge away and we went back into the Dragons. We just put in seven lightning, take out the defensive Queen, tag out a Scattershot, Expo, and also we're able to hit the Sweeper right there. So pretty solid amount of lightning value. And then we just put in a handful of blue Slammer and a Dragon Runner Imp in the far right. Heroes at the very bottom to make their way in the very bottom corner and work out the side of the funnel. And then the dragons go right up to get there with an early rage ward ability. And then we're running the rage gem still on the warden here. I like the rage gem for a dragon attack here because then we just get to keep the dragons raged for the majority of the of the base there. If you have more rages and you're running like e drags, then you probably want to go with healing tome, just a general tip right there. But in dragon attacks there, where we are not gonna have a lot of spell support towards the middle of the base, and I used up my spells for other things like lightning then I think the Rage Gem actually ends up being pretty good. And with the new Rocket Spear level, then we should be in an even better spot. But I did make a mistake on Normal Mode here compared to the Hard Mode. I actually executed the Hard Mode a little bit better here. And I 
actually covered the very, very top air defense with the overgrowth. And so I ended up taking a lot of extra damage up in there. But I think overall, I executed the two attacks here almost identical outside of that. And we'll see how big of an impact it has when we get to the very end. But there's a lot of dragons still alive for the hard mode. And there was a lot of dragons and everything still alive for the regular mode as well. So I feel like we approached the town hall with a lot of the same force in both the attacks here. We had to save any spells there. One freeze locked the town hall down. But in hard mode, it looks like I almost didn't make it through. Like, I luckily I had the queen ability at the very end here to get me passed over to that single inferno. Because otherwise, I don't think I would have. And so, that's the first attack that the hard mode actually seemed to have a little bit of an impact. And now let's begin the final town hall level that we're going to be looking at in this video. And if you want to see more of the hard mode, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. Because we're going to be seeing a lot of the pro esports tournaments. Switch it over to hard mode and we'll be probably running that as a standard in a lot of them from this point on. So have you seen any difference between the hard mode and the regular mode at any point during the video? Did, did it actually feel like it made a difference here? I guess we'll see if the result of this attack here where we just put in the Brewbiters and the Valkyries and we we're trying to set up a bat wave. We just waited for all the splash damage defenses to be under control. Pop out a couple of freeze in where necessary. And then a bat wave to go into the right side scatter shot. And then we just had to kind of coast our way to the town hall. And I think I might have executed it once again on a hard mode, just slightly better than on the regular mode. I think maybe my data might be a little skewed here because I think that because I did the attack on normal mode and then did the on the hard mode afterwards, I was able to get a little bit of additional warm up. So we can see that the regular mode had the bat survive. So maybe, maybe not because. Actually, even though I played the freeze a little bit differently in the regular and the hard mode, I actually got the bats to survive in the regular mode, and they didn't survive in the hard mode. But both of them, regardless of that, were able to finish off the base there in almost an identical time. There, I think it was about a minute and 40 seconds for both the hard mode and the regular mode. So I, I think it's kind of interesting that the hard mode is seeing almost identical results at every town hall level, except for the queen charge attack. I, I was kind of hoping that the hard mode would cause the attacks like queen charge to make their way back into the venom. So I'd say my final consensus on the hard mode is it looks like it's making the spam attacks stay roughly as powerful as they've always been. The equipment that does projectile damage is extremely powerful because its damage is not affected by activating the hard mode. And then thirdly, the things like queen charges seem to perform at a lower rate because they are so heavily dependent on the queen's raw damage output. And I guess hero dives probably would be affected at a similar rate there. And honestly, those are some of the coolest attacks in the game to watch a lot of times. And so I'm not really sure if they have everything figured out exactly with what we want hard mode to be, but obviously they're just testing it. So let's give Supercell some time. Maybe they can figure out how to tweak a little bit there. And I guess we'll see how it runs during the rest of the week here. And once we have all the tournaments switch over to it and then during the World Championship circuits. But I, th I think we're making steps in the right direction. But I still think it needs a few more tweaks. So if you found that interesting and you want to see more Clash of Clans esports, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Use code ERIC if you want to help support the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.